so many girls are in this on their high horse of well how come i'm not getting the good morning beautiful text well maybe you should do it it's you want to be this boss bitch well how come you can't send that text message good morning handsome hope you have an amazing day set that intention for him so that he can mirror that onto you but these women are so quick to want to receive from men but they're not willing to give and then they're wondering why they have all these deadbeat asses around them because <laughs> they can't give that same energy but they're so quick to receive that that's not fair damn what's up everybody welcome to another episode of purpose over pleasure the his and hers version with my lovely fiance my oftentimes biggest pain in the butt and for my number one fan right baby yes it's good to see you it's very great it's to only see been you. like seconds <laughs> but i already miss you i'm sorry can you introduce yourself who are you yes i am Alex Payne, your dear host, and today we're going to talk about something that every couple goes through. Today we're going to talk about fighting, and the title of today's episode is going to be How to Fight with Your Partner Better, and yes, I came up with a title, because she would have made it something a little more feminine, how to more effectively communicate with your partner. No, how to fight with your partner, but better, all right, and we're going to talk about the I things mean, that we implement in our relationship and how we settle fights, you know. And at the very end, stick around. We're going to give you the biggest reason why most couples fail to have proper arguments and relationships fall apart. And we'll give you some pointers that we utilize as well. Ready, babe? Yes. Okay. Ready to fight? We need a thing. Yeah, we need, one, we need to get one of those. Kyle, remind me to get or order one of those so we can we can start the episode like that next time. All right, let's jump into it. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, when you guys argue with each other, when you guys argue with your partners, please don't make it personal. Once you cross that threshold, it's almost impossible to come back from it. It's not personal. Try not to keep it personal unless your partner is just a toxic piece of human waste avoid being emotional about it and avoid taking it personal because understand both of you guys are arguing at the time at the moment and in the heat of the moment but what you say can affect the rest of your relationship it can affect the day too oh yeah it can affect. what's a day compared to the rest of the relationship shit some couples don't know how to how to, how to argue most we, people don't know how to argue in general yes but this episode is dedicated to couples. Right. This is the his and hers version. I know I heard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take, my friend? What's my take on the arguing? Oh, man, I've done a lot of arguing in my time. Mm. Do you have a hole in your lip, sir? I do. I do. But do luckily, you need a, do you need a popote? What's a popote? It's a straw. Yes, but no. Too late for that. Wow. Hey, that's what well, wash, we're going to have to train you that's on what uh, washers and dryers are for. Um, what's your take? All right, uh, what's my take on that? Uh, arguing. <sighs> well, we've had some the last few days. Oh, yeah. We're going through a seasonal depression. Which I don't believe in, but go on. And on top of that, we're going through <laughs> a that very time of the feminine, month. Uh, menstrual cycle yeah. that is new and she's a latina so it gives you guys an idea what the hell i'm going <laughs> through in my house the kind of danger uh, i'm in all right sorry i had to say that <clears throat> See, stab me in the middle of this episode then they'll know why <laughs> yeah arguing is very it's it's a tough one, you know, and I, I've gone through some arguing. I've witnessed arguing from families. Of course, the arguing that you pick up from your upbringing does play a factor in the arguments that you have with your partner. And I had to learn the hard way because I, in my past relationships, I've had the arguments that became very petty, the name-calling, mm -hmm. the bringing up old shit, the just childish nonsense 
um, like I said, the name calling, every name in the book, it's just bad. That was the parents? No, that was the ex-boyfriend. Your... Okay. Parents, they, it, they would, my parents would never call me bad names mm -hmm. like that. I mean, I'm grateful enough that my parents wouldn't hit me. They would yell. There's a lot mm -hmm. of yelling, but uh, more obedience, more of the you got to stand at that wall, hold books. If your nose doesn't touch, if <laughs> oh, I yeah. come in and your nose isn't touching that wall, then that's another five minutes. And I'm like, oh, shit. So there was that kind of growing up. I got my ass whooped. <sighs> but I deserved it. I mean, I've got my, I got backhanded once. <laughs> once? <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm a vet comparing to you, dude. Well, see, also, the boys get different than girls. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was daddy's girl, but still being daddy's girl, it it was... <laughs> <laughs> Don't start, okay? I was still, you know, I had to. And he would tell me, he's like, I don't want to hit you, but you're going to have to mm. learn. I, Who backhanded you? My mom. Oh, <laughs> Bam. I love you, Mom. <laughs> and I know it hurt her, too, because she still has a mark on her hand. Are you serious? Yeah, Damn. Because I had braces. Ooh. So my braces cut her back of her Emotional fist. Emotional damage. <laughs> but oh, I agree with you. I think par we learn how to argue from who? First and foremost, from our parents. Well, our remember, families. not everybody has parents. So okay. it's their from upbringing. Our immediate, immediate. From whoever raised Person, you know, surround immediate surrounding. Because it for me, when my mom was always working, we were sent off to my aunt and my uncle's house after school, and that couple would argue all the time. Mm. And that was just my uncle was in X, Eighteenth Street and mm. Army, and just lovely, lovely combo. Oh yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's the best. don't 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 get personal. <laughs> For me, the biggest thing about getting personal is that I know that if I begin to get personal, then it will be hard for me to come back from the damage I might do, just like physical. Mm -hmm. It will be really tough if I allow that, that part, that side of me to come out. Definitely got to have the physical part under control for all, for everyone, both men and women. Everybody's capable of it. Everybody's Correct. capable of going below the belt. Yes. It, Verbally, yeah. Yeah. I mean, takes, some, some people are just like, don't even know how to argue, but in rare cases, for the most part, when I see couples who really get personal with each other, I was like, God damn, you guys go home together at the end of the day? Horrible. And, and, and when that comes up, that's a clear red flag that you haven't healed that part of you or that topic it was only just thrown up under the rug mm -hmm. it was never faced it was just like very not deep co conversations it was just it's still hurting that person if mm. it for it to come back up like that then that just means that it wasn't resolved yeah, hit him if you if you purposely trying to hit below the belt, then you, you definitely need to work on your shit. Yeah. But what? Let's tell them what we do. Well, what we recently did too. I think that was a good idea. Um, is take a break and revisit the topic later. Yeah. But there's a second part to it. We'll do. We can discuss that too. But take a break and revisit later. I Which think is that's why I important. was telling you to go. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you, just go. And, and you and, didn't want to, and, and I off, was like, okay, and off I let's went. go. And off <laughs> Took I you a while. I no, I just, I just, I asked her, so we got into an argument. He got heated. Shit, I don't know, they, they might think that our heated version gets really, really messy, but it got heated, but obviously nothing physical. Uh, we don't have, like, crazy arguments. She suggested that I need to stop talking, and we'll discuss this later. Not and, in those terms, but yes. <laughs> and I just said, okay, as long as you promise that we're going to discuss, discuss this later, then we can revisit it. And she, <laughs> she said, yeah, she promised. Took me a while. <laughs> and, yeah, and then off I went. But that break helped us both to calm down. Well, I'll speak for myself. I was able to calm down, 
was able to think about things, I was able to do some productive work around the house, in one half of the house, and you were in the other half of the house. Yeah. Close the door and we're like, yeah. please don't come in here. <laughs> Luckily, we, ha- we have. <laughs> I noticed uh, you're doing laundry and you usually do it in the room. And I saw you doing it over here. I'm like, that's right. Stay on the other side of the house. <laughs> oh, it was, was more funny. convenient. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, but definitely, definitely a good idea. And we've, we've done this before. It's not like it's the first time. I mean, that's. I feel like that was one of the... the... A break was definitely a good idea. That was one of the most heated. Yeah. Because the other ones, it's been like just a snap, like we snap, but then mm. we quickly just like, all right. But because of this new transition I'm going through emotionally mm-hmm. and hormonally, it just triggered me. Because I said things that I just was, how can I say this? It just bothered me, the things you had done. And (laughs) when I said what I said, you flipped out because you never would have expected me to say what I said. And I was just mad because I was at my end's wit with, what i'm dealing with myself because i didn't vocalize it to you because again i don't want to use that as an excuse why i'm kind of like in my mood because i'm you have to understand from a female's perspective these emotions these hormones Mm -hmm. it comes just out of the blue and men will never understand that just like women will never understand the things that men have to face and the life that they have to, to live as a man, as a protector, as a provider. Now, when you had said, you need to control your emotions. <laughs> oh, my God. Do not. Men uh, do not. No, okay. Let me explain that. Hold on. Do uh, not ever tell a woman to control their emotions because that's how I knew he doesn't understand this. And it pissed me off because you didn't understand that. I'll tell you why I said that. Okay? I'll tell you why. My reasoning behind that is not to piss you off. And my reasoning behind that is definitely not because I don't understand it. It is because I think at the end of the day, you're an adult. I'm an adult. Just like I have no excuse as an adult man to resort to violence. Or start breaking shit around the house, no matter how angry I get. Okay, I I do my best to remain stoic. And the last thing I ever want to do is get physical, whether it's relationship, yeah, especially physical. not in a relationship, physical. like even in, in, in a street fight or something. I'll do everything to de-escalate it. Like I'm still a winner, as long as nobody's life is in danger. My life is not in danger. Whatever you can say, whatever you want to say. I'm going home and I'm gonna sleep tight in my bed. But if you decide to go physical then then i'll just yeah it's free for all but especially in this relationship right i think you have to be an adult first yes i understand that it that time of the month you know comes with a lot of hormones a lot of emotions you know i'm and I constantly try to work on myself especially when it's new but at the end of the day in a worst case scenario situation in life, you still have to be a rational, conscious human being and not a primal, animalistic, emotionally controlled creature. But what you didn't understand is, is because I was very conscious that these hormones were being triggered, which is why I told you, stop go to the other room mm-hmm. i was trying to give you oh an yeah out. yeah 100 percent. i understood i picked that up but you didn't do it was my argument like whether you didn't want to or not because you wanted to control the situation you have to understand that i know that i was gonna cry i knew that it was just gonna get out of control so in order for me to stop i needed you to stop and, and, and yeah. go to another room so that I can finish and get and control my emotions. Mm-hmm. So you literally were just like, 
And I'm like, stop. Just stop. Okay, you portray me as a villain. No, right because you were trying to control the situation. You guys are getting both sides of the story right now. Okay. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. I wish there was a damn drone watching us. But uh, that's that's yeah. what I'm saying because I know how I am and I mm. know that this is new for me. And, I, and that's why I was like, no, I couldn't explain to you that you need mm -hmm. to stop because I was... It, 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 it was going to get out of control, whether mm -hmm. you were trying to control it or not. I wasn't saying that it was going to get out of control. It was just, I, it's an internal thing. And either I was going to walk away and then you would got pissed off. And so I'm like, okay, you got to leave. Either you got to go or I got to go. But someone has to mm -hmm. just separate. And so when I did, of course, I went to the other room and I cried because for one, I'm dealing with these emotions. Two, I'm upset that I'm having to deal with these emotions. And three, doing things I don't want to do right now because of the emotions that I'm facing. And you didn't understand that because it's new to you and it's frustrating to me because I'm like, I know I'm not a weak bitch. I can do better. And the fact that I didn't have control over that was very frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. And when you're there trying to control the situation, I'm like, I can't even fucking control my own situation. <laughs> you're not going to help. So just get out of the room and leave. Yeah. Well, ultimately, yeah, that is that is exactly what we're talking about. She just touched on all, on all the points. The, the ultimate beginning of the resolution to that conflict was taking a break. It's hard. Let's admit it. It's not easy to stop in a burst of your highest emotions and anger is one of the highest emotions so it's not easy to be conscious during an argument when emotions are high especially when you're angry to realize that you need to take a break and i think with more practice comes better a bit ability to to do that and i'll be honest i was in in a past relationship where he wasn't mature enough to stop mm -hmm. and that's where relationships fail because if neither one of the individuals are willing to stop it's going to get a lot worse and the toxicity in that relationship is just going to grow and i'm grateful enough that neither one of us are toxic in that way but i'm conscious that if you weren't con you, you didn't know how to control your your emotions or your feelings Or your anger it would have gotten worse yeah it could have because if i know that that's not right to edge somebody on like that and you kept on then i would have like all right well here we go this is where you're not gonna stop well then i'm not gonna stop yeah. and it's important that people are very clear that you can't do that somebody has to just say all right i gotta stop people don't People don't. People will continue to want to get the last word. How do you think people can be mindful during a fight that they need to stop and take a break? Like, What do you think they need to think they, about or be aware of? They have to remind themselves that this is just a temporary feeling. Mm -hmm. And not to continue to feed that ego of anger. Because when you continue to feed that ego, that emotion of anger you're just fueling that f with more fire and if you ha you have to check it you have to just hey he he's my partner we're in this together it's him and i against the world yeah. or him and her or her and i against the world and it's 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 tough mm -hmm. but understanding that this is a temporary feeling and i know that i don't want to be upset with him or i don't want to be upset with her Because I enjoy my time with her. I enjoy my time with him. And I know that I didn't want it to get worse. So that's why I'm like, okay, I need, I just stop. We yeah. need to, because I don't want it to continue. I don't want to say things and it, and you say things because I've been in that situation. Yeah. I've been in it with my family. I've been in it with relationships and it was just, it, it just went so bad. And people don't know when to stop. They think hurting them is going to make them the bigger person. But when you hurt somebody and you go below the belt, that just makes you less of a person. Yeah. Because, yeah, you may know that information, 
but you're going below the belt and that makes you a, per, a, a lower individual because like why would you need to go that way i get it so uh yeah i think uh separating you know and also knowing when to come back and when to like talk about it <laughs> well this is this is the next one that we're going to talk about is awkward <laughs> how do you restart the conversation no how do you break the break you have to break the ice yes to break the ice when it, yeah. one of the individuals has to give in well first and foremost how much is long enough break like what what how five minutes 15 minutes five hours no five, five hours days too long. okay so i'd say a good hour a good hour a good hour, a good hour away from each other doing something uh productive where you can be to, all, that left alone with your thoughts and not necessarily going to social media not starting to call people and vent to them definitely avoid those two things do something productive with your hands such as do laundry go for a walk by yourself uh, start building something or, or cleaning something and just think about the things or even journal or even journal journal yeah. your emotions because sometimes when you actually write out the things you wanted to say to that person the argument or also dissect what happened sometimes when you either rewrite it or you say it out loud um you actually don't even resonate with that feeling anymore yeah so you know, sort in a sort of a way, you vent to the journal. You vent yourself out to the journal. You you have you're now a little more rational, and then you can even like pick out. Okay, this is irrelevant. This is not important. But this and this one, that's what I want to talk about instead of. And and then that allows you to go back to your partner and say, okay, these feel. This is what I'm still triggered by, and I need to talk to you about it. Yeah. Because if this is triggering me and I feel strongly with that, I need to discuss it with you because then it's going to come up again if it's not resolved. Yeah. And we don't definitely don't want to do that. So that at least an hour. If needed to be more than more, but I'll say at least an hour. Mm -hmm. is, 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 is at a, least is an hour, enough. but be conscious of the argument and also keep in mind that your partner is your partner. They are yeah. on your team. Yeah. If you're in that mindset of, well, fuck him, fuck her, like, I don't need him, I don't need her. If your mind is going down uh, that path, you don't need to be with that person. Because mm -mm. if your mind no. is directly saying, well, well, fuck him, you I don't, can go get You don't to come back to the conversation with the attitude of anger. The mm -hmm. whole point of a break is to release and get over the feeling of anger and then come back and revisit the subject if you need to as a rational human being without emotions. That's so pick, pick enough time to have enough to calm down pretty much. And also know that you have to reflect on you, not on that person. People are so quick to, well, you did this. Mm, you yes, did this yes. and that's why I got mad. Correct. Reflect on yourself. So you need to reflect on yourself and acknowledge why it made you upset, why it made you emotional, why it um, affected you, because it's not their responsibility how you feel. You feel you feel that feeling because that's your feeling. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. And I couldn't be upset with you of how I'm feeling. You were just in the crossfire. You said something or you did something and <laughs> and I re I responded to that. Yeah. And people are so quick to blame other people. But when you're conscious of, okay, I acted this way because X, Y, and Z. And that person probably didn't even know that that's what bothered you. But you see, you guys see the sequence? I got caught in the crossfire. F me, right? And had we let go of the control of ourselves and let the situation get personal and start hitting below the belt, you know, the situation would have gotten a lot worse. So you guys see the, uh, the pattern here. So how to break the ice. 
Now that we discussed what to do, how long to do it for, let's discuss how to end the break. So I'll tell you guys how I like to break the ice. I basically start being playful. I start joking around. I know I can make you laugh. And that goes and annoy you. That goes back to the knowing that that's your partner. Like yeah. if you really truly love your partner and that that quote, I can't one minute of anger is 60 seconds wasted. Mhm. And I've always had that, and I like to think of that whenever I get in an argument. You don't want something to go sour and something happens to that person yeah. over an argument. Yeah. But sometimes that does get is louder when you don't want to speak to that person. Like, I was just like, I'm not talking to him. I'll, and I'll be honest, I was a little petty, but I didn't express my pettiness but within my head i she, was like she was I'm just she was just like mm, mm, he could talk mm, to me mm, yeah he can talk i'm to like me. i'm nope i'm yeah. not gonna say sorry <laughs> but at the end of the day you don't go back into it with the intention of like continue. i'm gonna prove my point right. and i'm gonna continue the argument no you go there with intention of all right we're on the same page you're my part she's my partner or he's my partner you know we love each other we're on the same team and above all that, especially when you have kids, then you, you have, to, to, you have to, yeah, you don't want them to see their parents argue because they learn f from you. And I if you set a imagine. horrible example of how to argue, your children will be used to that and they will accept that in their relationship and they're going to have some fucked up ass relationship. When you have kids, you have to respond quickly. Oof. Yeah. When you have kids, you have to have your emotions in check. Because if you just retaliate right then and there in front of the kids, mm. then they're going to see it. And you can't you can't retract your steps from that. Yeah. So it's like if we were to have kids and they were to have seen that, then we're going to have to apologize to them. Then we're going to have to explain it to them. So on top of us trying to figure out the the mm -hmm. argument, then we're going to have to explain why we argued. It's just, and I know we don't have kids yet, mm -hmm. but this is a, a trial run so that when we do have kids, we're, we're able to not react intensely, quickly, but learn, okay, she said something. I know she's mad. I'm not going to say anything back. And we're going to discuss this when the waters are a little bit more steady. Is the shit talk okay, though? In front of kids? Mm -hmm. See, that is... Because we know we do a lot We do, of that. but I think um, that's... We're going to have to get back to that when we do have kids because... Kids absorb everything. Yeah. I just like, like that. So. Yeah, but we do it out of love. We do it out of love, yeah. but we're, we might have to it's tone funny. it down yeah. to a certain degree where it won't be as intense with like the cussing and, you know, more oh, playful. Man. So, yeah, maybe when they get older, like 10 or something. But so, when we get to that bridge, we will cross it. No B words? Bums? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to really be mindful. So. Next key point <coughs> is know when to discuss things. So know the best time to discuss best. things. And I'll give you guys yes. an example. Okay, so follow us, right? We're giving you, we're feeding this to you step by step, right? What to do, how to do it, what is the appropriate time, what to, what techniques to use. Now that you broke the ice, okay, it's important to know when is the best time to revisit certain topics. And I'll tell you guys firsthand, a nice dinner at a nice well, Italian restaurant might not be the best place. So let's back to up. To discuss very serious things. So you did break the ice and you came in uh -huh. and just, I had my head, my AirPods on. And I, was, I, I do this because when I need to ground myself, 
I have to listen to meditation music. Mm. There's certain sounds that will bring you back to a Zen space. So I did that. So I'm in my office and I'm working on my stuff. And the sounds that I'm listening to are very intense. And I'm focused. So I'm trying to just get in my Zen and the sounds. And all I feel is this aura and this big face right in front of my face scared the shit out of me and uh, I couldn't help but just jerk and and then laugh and um, then he says okay well two things um, I'm gonna go for a run and we're going to dinner so I will never say no to food (laughs) Remember, guys, <laughs> it's always a good idea to feed them. I did a lo- I did more than just feeding her. Um, but bottom line is, no matter what you do at the end of the day, yeah, it's very important to know the time. And so, so he says, we're going to discuss this over dinner. Da, da, da. So me, not... I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging the fact that I appreciate that he wants to discuss it over the dinner. But I also didn't want him to think that I was going to... Um, I didn't want to say no. I didn't want to say no, we don't want to dis- I don't want to discuss it. Because I think that... I didn't want, I, my thing is I didn't want to turn you down. Yeah. And I didn't want you to get upset if I said, no, I don't want to discuss it. So <laughs> I said, okay, let's go to dinner. And, also, you, know, you, were, and you were hungry too. So and I was hungry. the fact that you were hungry So, too. yes, we went to dinner. And you will never say no to Italian. And um, you, I was like, all right, well, you know what? <laughs> You're going to find out today that it was not the best uh, time to yeah. <laughs> go back to discuss what we, what the argument was. Yeah, but it wasn't an argument. We did not get into oh, yeah, an argument no. or a fight in the middle of a, a restaurant. No, 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 we're not. We're both adults. Uh, I guess I'll just tell them. You got emotional again, mm-hmm. right? And that, I did, obviously, I never enjoyed seeing you being emotional. So I was like, all right, cool. This is definitely not the time and place. Let me switch gears a little bit. You want some dessert, baby? You know, you, you want any more appetizers after the main course? <laughs> Yeah, but bottom line is there's a time for for everything. Mm-hmm. I assume that will be the best time, but yeah, I think focusing more on maybe recapping the week and your emotional time of the month and just talking about things like we had last night after I nearly broke my foot. This episode was supposed to be recorded last night. But somebody doesn't I nearly, know how to pick up their feet while it, getting it, into the shower. Why you got, now, why you got to put this shit like that? First of all, I know how to pick up my feet. If you guys... That's not what the shower you, said. You never slipped in the <laughs> With shower. With your hair and your you, skin on the crevices oh, of yeah, the tub. Yeah, let's, let's just say a piece of me is literally in the shower. It got flushed down. A chunk of skin with some hair. Gross. But yeah, and I had a swelling the size of, you know, half a, half a tennis ball. But regardless... Yeah, of me nearly dying. Thank you for coming to my rescue. What if I would have died? I didn't hear you. Mm, I would have heard Sasquatch wow. fall if I would have. Oh, yeah. It. You want to start right now, folks? <laughs> I didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> well, I heard you today. I was like, are you okay? Um. Yeah, we had a really p- productive conversation, and we try to do that. We try. I think lately, because we were so determined to finish the year strong i know at least for me um i haven't i felt like in 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 maybe a couple of weeks we haven't really have had our end of the week recap sit downs you know or or uh, you know we haven't really had like a dinner date because it's been it's been a lot and we had to have dinner with somebody else and then skip it one time but and and the dinner that we had was focused more on resolving an issue from before which now that i think is whatever and that's why it's more important to talk about our our and i didn't want to i knew what you were trying to do like i explained yesterday i knew that you were trying to 
discuss what happened but because i knew that i was emotional mm -hmm. i wasn't going to say that and then you think i was trying to avoid the conversation because i wasn't trying to avoid the conversation i don't want you to think oh i didn't want to tell you no i don't want to talk about it over dinner because you probably would have think oh you're trying to avoid it no i'm not trying to avoid it i just know that i'm it, it's i know that right now my state of mind yeah. is in a emotional yeah. state but you also know that i'm okay with pausing something that's not like imminent that needs to be done right now and revisiting the subject even if it's uncomfortable later so i'm telling you right now and now that we're talking about that subject like like today you were trying to tell me something and i was like can we revisit, revisit this later i said yeah and then <laughs> i don't know how you say it <laughs> okay it, it's how i say it. i just say hey babe, babe this is this important right now no i will revisit, revisit it later i was in the middle of something <laughs> we did but it's which is another good point don't be afraid to be having to discuss uncomfortable things later so you have to be open to that because if you keep you know dusting everything under the rug like you mentioned earlier the shit is gonna spill out well that's the thing i didn't want to do that yeah. so i'm like okay let's yeah let's find well, I think, out i think that's another, that's another good technique to, to use though now that i think about it that, you know i should have just left that for the next day it didn't but have to be dinner. that yeah. day but regardless i'm pretty proud of us right okay moving on to the next thing and i think the most important thing let's say the argument happened you stopped the fight you took a break you took a break long enough for to you, you to calm down. Then you were playful enough or sarcastic or you joke around, you broke the ice, communicated again, right? Um, picked the right time to discuss things that were on your mind. All that are necessary. All those are necessary steps to, to have a proper conflict resolution. But I want to talk about the most, most important think they needs to be under absolute control during any argument any debate especially when it comes to relationship and it's the three letter word do you notice know you told you use that word a lot you not a lot but you remind me to always keep that under control you know what i'm talking about your favorite word starts with the e ego ego Take the ego out of the equation mm -hmm. in many things in life, especially during any kind of argument or conflict resolution in relationship. Yeah, because it, it's quick. It's quick to come out from under you. Mm -hmm. And it's, then you start acting with your ego. Sometimes you don't even know. You're like, oh, shit. It's blinding. Mm -hmm. What is ego, do you think? You know, when, you, when you, you can be a rational person at some point, you can be a violent person, you know, the n next moment. But what is ego? What is ego inside of you? Is it, is it your insecurity? Is it your fears? Is it hate and anger? It's a mixture of all that, depending on the setting. Because your ego can come into place in a situation where it's protecting you but in reality it's holding you back yeah defensive like, we get we get defensive everything stems to that everything stems to the and ego and that's why understanding your ego understanding the ego traits understanding how you act when that happens or in situations where you're like is this really genuinely how i feel yeah or is this just my ego speaking for me keep your ego under control who do you think has m more problems with you. that <laughs> just kidding <laughs> that's a straight dick punch right there <laughs> because because you know but i no, i think okay between the two of us, who do you think has a bigger ego? Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have 
to go with that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Probably would have yeah, to, yeah. you're I, gonna just because not by a margin, right? Not by a margin. But I'm very conscious of when I am in my ego state. I've noticed that I can. I'm no problems acknowledging the fact that I was speaking with my ego. Mm -hmm. I've noticed, and I'm very grateful that I'm clear and conscious that I can accept and um, and be authentic with that. I know when I'm using my ego, and I know when I'm genuine. I know when sometimes I'm feeling egotistical and where I know that it can come up and I'm like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna add more of those ego feelings. I think a lot of women get this part wrong. When they're in a relationship with men and the conflicts come up, women, a lot of women tend to hit that man's ego and do something or say something to stab him right in the ego, to get it triggered. And what they have very little knowledge of is how to boost a man's ego. I, I'll give him an example. You're a good example of the opposite. You know, and you just mentioned earlier, when not to trigger my ego. And it's a active work on both of us, right? I control it, but you also know how not to go after it and how to trigger my ego. But you're also good at knowing how to compliment me and say things to me that you know will inspire and motivate me and then that's ego too that's ego too knowing because that's at the end of the day that's what men want to hear and i'm not saying you need to flatter your man and just continue to boost his ego but when i'm down you know compliment. how to pick me There's up a difference yes you don't want to beat somebody yeah. down <laughs> like and i told you that you asked me how my headache was doing earlier and I didn't want to come off as an asshole, but that's how it came off. Where it was fine when you had left. I took that Tylenol. I did the the what was it? The electrolytes, mm -hmm. and it start it went away. And so when I walked outside, it started to hurt again. Mm. So when I said it, and I said, "Well, it was fine until you came back." I didn't take it personally. I know you yeah. didn't, but when I said that, I was like, "That was kind of a dick thing to say." On a scale of dick thing to say or not, on a scale from not a dick thing to say to dick thing to say, it's definitely closer to the dick right. thing to say, because but I did not take it personally. I, and when I said that, I was like, Nicole, you, that's not something you would want to say. And that's why I quickly was like, well, it was because of the, yeah. the, but I knew that if I wanted to feed my ego, I wouldn't have said it was because of the cold. Because I I can be that evil person, but I have that under control. Because I don't feel that way towards you. I don't want to make you feel that way, whether it hurt you or not. That's my ego wanting to hurt you because I was just bothered because of my headache, mm -hmm. and I wanted to. I when you had I was I was bothered with you because of how you responded to me earlier, and I took it personal. You weren't trying to you know, respond to me that way. I took it personal because I was just in my feelings and because I was hurt. And when you asked me, I said, I said what I said. It was fine till you came back. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, no, I was buying don't. food for us. I, exactly. That's yeah. why I was like, no, Nicole, you can't yeah. respond that way. Whether or not it hurts him, you can't feed the ego yeah. and, and go with that, that state. Yeah. Now imagine Imagine you have one person who wants to stab this person's ego and this person has very little control of their ego. God, that's a recipe for disaster. That's that's active work on both sides. And the, the cards can, can switch at any time. It can be a day where, you know, maybe I'll, I'll say something to trigger your ego and then you'll, God forbid, won't have that control. So it's it, it goes both ways. What I'm trying to say is in any relationship, if you have that positive and negative, they will attract each other, but it's going to be a very, very fatal, not literally fatal, but shit, I mean, it's, it's gotten fatal. We, all, we, all, we know Mr. O.J. Simpson. Um, yeah, you have to be mindful. Yeah, both parties have to be mindful of what they say and, and what they allow to come out of their mouth. Everybody's capable of hurting yeah. somebody else. Oh, yeah. 
especially with your partnership because you get very vulnerable with your partner mm -hmm. you know you ask questions of what has happened in the past so everybody has the capabilities of doing it it's just knowing you don't want to put them in that state you don't want them to feel that way that they felt in the past you want that person mm -hmm. to feel safe with you yeah you have it in the palm of your hands to throw it back at them but why would you want to do that because then you're going to lose their trust then they're not going to want to confide in you with things and then yeah. that's how the relationship starts to diminish because there are things that you confided in me that when you make me mad i can bring them up mm -hmm. and how are you going to grow from that you're yeah. going to grow separately yeah. And I'm going to say this from my personal experience as well. There's a lot of women out there who will purposely do that and they will go after a man's ego and they don't understand the damage that they do to a man. And because men, since an early age, oftentimes are taught not to be vulnerable, not express their feelings, not be emotional, combination of those two can lead to, lead, lead to very, very bad things. In my personal experience, I've had a relationship where I was vulnerable with somebody and that whatever I shared, the pain that I shared, was thrown back in my face. And for a long time, and you notice even in our relationship, what do I still, I'm much, much, much better now than I was before, but what do I still have a hard time doing? Expressing Sometimes yourself. Expressing myself. And it, it planted such a deep deep root in me that it's has taken me years and it will take me some more time to be able to be completely vulnerable but i understand that it's a work in progress and i understand that to be authentic you have to be vulnerable with people and for any relationship to grow between two people they have to both be vulnerable with each other that's the only way you're going to get to know that person i mean physical emotional spiritual you know, it, it it was uncomfortable for me to express my spirituality with you because I was afraid that you would judge me, you would criticize me, you would laugh at me, you would not believe in what, you know, that took a lot from me because I was very uncomfortable. It's like, uh, I'm learning these things and it resonates with me. I, I wasn't going to put my beliefs onto you. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never do that to anybody, but I was so strong in my beliefs that I told myself, if you don't want to come around, that's okay, but I'm not going to allow myself to to lessen this learning because you don't agree with yeah. it. That's not fair to me. Like, I wouldn't want to take anything away from you that you learn. So that's why sometimes when I when you discuss things with me and or you you know you have to work over time and I don't nitpick you because I know that that's what you have to do for your job. I know that that's what's going to enhance your 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 knowledge and things, but I also know how to express my feelings so that you don't feel like I'm attacking you. People should never feel attacked from their partner. Because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And I have to be mindful of what I say so that I don't come off as needy or I don't understand or that I'm not respectful of your time and your job. Because I wouldn't want that to be done to me. So I have to watch what I say. Damn. Some women should be taking notes right now, like <laughs> straight up writing shit down because that would save a lot of relationships. And I'm not saying guys don't do that type of shit. I'm saying most, a lot of times, most of the workforce out there is our men. So the most overtime is worked by men. So the fact that women get this thought of, oh, now it's, are you sure he's working overtime? And it goes back to the thought of, okay, well, if you think he's doing something else, you're just planting that seed. And then when you start diving into or expressing that to your friends, and then they're going to start watering that seed that he's doing something else. But the More attention like you give, online. the attention you give to that thought will blossom, yeah. whether it's good or bad. The and attention goes where you're. 
focus goes, right? What's the saying? Where your attention goes. Where your focus goes, your attention flows. Something or where your like attention that. flows, your focus goes. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I And I think people need to stop and think before they say what they're really feeling. Because mm -hmm. again, it can be the ego creating these thoughts and some and a lot of the times these thoughts aren't even ours it's just ideas oh that's a dangerous one too what did i say earlier don't go on social media and don't start blasting your friends and your family members saying oh my god this is what happened can you believe this motherfucker blah blah, blah. how toxic can it be that person can literally take your idea and exponentially grow it mm -hmm. or say something to and start put more it. fire or feeding it. it it's a horrible it's a recipe for disaster mm -hmm. it's very important not to start talking to your friends and family members after a fight with your partner like i said you need to talk to yourself about it because yeah. you're gonna discuss that argument with somebody else but you're not even conscious of how you felt because we have more than one version of ourselves within ourselves. True. We have different thoughts in our heads at different times of the day, different um, ages in our lives. When we, I mean, I found a journal when I was 18 and I'm like, I'm like, I was depressed? What the fuck was I depressed about? I don't feel that way anymore. Yeah. And same thing with months ago. There's things that I've journaled about and I'm like, I really don't feel like that anymore. Mm -hmm. So our mood changes with experiences and emotions that we go through during the day. So in the morning, you may feel excited and just refreshed and energized with these thoughts. And then by the end of the day, because of all the things you've went through, all the energetic life forms that you had to experience that day, you might be drained. So you're not going to have the same mood that you had when you first woke up. Mm -hmm. That's why they say journal what comes to your mind in the morning. Your intentions, put your intentions for the day. And then at night, you write down how the day actually went. And then you write down what you're grateful for. So that when you go to bed, you're sleeping in a state of gratitude. gratitude. So that when you wake up, you're excited and you're grateful to be alive and to enjoy the day yeah. and to have a better day. But when you are sitting there dwelling on shit, then it's going to make you upset. One of my friends sent this post and it said something like this girl was annoyed. She said something like sometimes it gets annoying when a guy sends a good morning text every day. And I'm like, well, to a certain degree, you know, you don't always text me good morning. Yeah, she said, yeah, it would be get annoying. And yeah, I understand it would get annoying. Like, oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Or good morning, beautiful. Like, change it up. Or what women need to also understand that it's not the men that always need to send the good morning texts. Women need to do better and also send those good morning texts. Definitely. It's not just a one-sided thing. Women need to do better at uh, giving than receiving. So many girls are in this on their high horse of, well, how come I'm not getting the good morning beautiful text? Well, maybe you should do it. It's You want to be this boss bitch? Well, how come you can't send that text message? Good morning, handsome. Hope you have an amazing day. Set that intention for him so that he can mirror that onto you. But these women are so quick to want to receive from men, but they're not willing to give. And then they're wondering why they have all these deadbeat asses around them because <laughs> they can't give that same energy. But they're so quick to receive that. That's not fair. Damn. <laughs> I hope you are listening. This was one of those mic drop moments right here. I, I, was, I was listening. I was like, tell him, baby, tell him. Tell him how you really feel. But, but that's just, that's what the era we're in. Yeah. And it's very Entitled, unfortunate. Titled Bad Bitch Wanna Be Queens. No bullshit. Finally, this 
what I'm going to say next, what we're going to give you next is the value that we promised to you guys in the beginning of this episode, right? And when you argue, this is the message, when you argue, argue to understand and not prove your point. Mm -hmm. So after we've given you the whole blueprint of how to have a good, productive conflict resolution, remember when you're trying to resolve the problem, when you're in the middle of that even heated debate or a post-debate, post-break discussion for that conflict resolution, switch off from the ego and go into the mode of trying to understand another person instead of proving your point. That has made significant differences for me in my relationship, in business, my job, and, and overall. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard because the ego stands on the way. But just trying to understand what the other person is trying to tell you will help you find a better conflict resolution at the end of the day. Be empathetic. Be also yeah. sympathetic. And just try to understand. Having empathy with your partner is very, very important. Because again, it's you and them against the outside. Because when you're in an argument, we're arguing because we're not agreeing on something. Mm -hmm. So instead of, of I have to be I have to be right. No, we can agree to disagree, but I need want I need to know what went through your head so that I can get a better understanding why the conf why the conflict happened. Mm -hmm. You need to get an understanding of what went through my head and my emotions. So when you're empathetic, you're able to come to a level of love for your partner and and tell yourself, okay, well, I don't want to be mad at, at him or her because that's we're wasting time on enjoying laughs, enjoying knowledge together or sharing something good reading something together but when we're arguing that's taken away from that mm -hmm. and then we're missing out life is short life is short that video that i sent you about the guy who got really emotional on the plane because oh, his, yeah. his wife passed away from from cancer yeah i think he had her ashes next to him just yeah just she, it her. was on the side and i was pictures. like damn Whew. You just got to be able to, don't be afraid to say I love you to people you love. Do your best to spend to spend time with them. I'm working on that. You're working on that. Is at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, we're on borrowed time. And for me, one of the biggest life-changing, eye-opening things was understanding that I'm on borrowed time understanding that tomorrow is not guaranteed understanding that i only have a finite amount of time and time is the enemy so why should i waste my precious time being angry being pissed depressed have petty. anxiety petty think with my ego fuck all that i have a limited amount of time i'm gonna maximize the good out of it and then you also don't want to be around people like that Fuck that. I mean, you're witnessing it now where you start seeing this trait, the, the, the toxic traits in these people. And you're like, man, I don't want to even be around that anymore mm -hmm. because it's draining and they aren't seeing the level that you see. And it then you start having empathy for you, mm. for them. Like, man, I'm sorry you're not in this love state of being. That's a next level of growth. Because mm -hmm. first you're like angry. You're like, why? Why don't you fucking understand? Like, why can't you fix your shit? To as you get a little wiser. And wise men told me, like, listen, man, not everything needs your reaction. Sometimes you need to sit back and just watch and understand that you can't save everyone. Mm -mm. So stop trying to save everyone. And you don't have enough energy to be, to be angry at everyone. So stop being angry at everyone. Just accept them. It'll be better for you. So I went with it. And now I just accept the person for who they are. If they're not willing to change, no matter how much I, I try to change them, how much I love them. And I just continue my growth. And sometimes people fall out. Sometimes people change their ways and they try to try to stay with you. But it is what it is. I aim 
towards levels where I want to be happy and I want to make around people around me happy and that requires a lot of self-work first because people are going to see that you love yourself mm -hmm. first and foremost and there's going to be some that are going to be jealous or envious but there's always going to be room for people but they just have to do the work for themselves like i've always said i don't hate anybody i just have boundaries knowing that I don't associate with you anymore. But when you're ready to be on the level of being positive or just having that empathy and no triggers or, or judging or criticizing, it's like everybody is on their own journey. When you're ready, there's always room for you at my table. But just make sure that you can have those good conversations at the table. Not the, oh, well, this happened to her. Or what about this? And or, or gossip. the gossip. I just, I can't. Hey, gossip. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And people are, are on their own journey of change. We will never be able to change yeah, anybody. Some people won't change at all. And that's unfortunate. Well, there it is, guys. We gave it the entire blueprint just to kind of give you guys a quick summary of how to more productively resolve your conflicts with your loved ones. Strategizing. How to strategize properly. This is a strategy that we use that's been working so far and that we believe if you implement it into your relationships will help you as well, right? First and foremost, don't take things personal. Don't get personal with your partner during an argument. Second, take a break. At least an hour, take a break, go calm down, do something with your hands, clean the house, do some laundry, and think about it by yourself. Self-reflect, not only on what just happened, but also on yourself. Don't try to call people. Don't try to go on social media. Reflect on yourself, by yourself. Don't be petty during an argument. No one is to end the break and know how to end the break. Be playful. It's okay to crack jokes, but come from a place of love and understanding. And also know when to revisit the subject. Because not all the time is the right time to revisit revisit previous conflicts. And at the very base of it is don't let your ego get in the way. Because the ego will destroy everything. And when you finally get to the point where you're now calm, healthy, and willing to resolve the conflict. When you get back to it, understand that you need to argue or debate to understand the other person and not try to prove your point and that all these steps combined i think will help resolve a lot of issues in your guys relationships and if you try to practice those or at least most of those or some of those i guarantee you they will help you out tremendously or use the oreo cookie method the Oreo cookie method. You <laughs> love that thing, don't you? I mean, everybody does. I mean, I love it too. <laughs> Oreo cookie method, guys, we discussed it before, is when you start something and when you talk about something uncomfortable, whether it's with your partner, employee, coworker, or even the boss, or even, I don't know, your parents, you start with one side of the cookie, right? I come from a place of love. I love you. I care for you. I want so much more for you. Remember the good. Talk about the good, positive things. And then flow into the cream. The good stuff, right? The uncomfortable stuff. The stuff that needs to be talked about and discussed and resolved. And then close it out for the other side of the cookie, right? Mm -hmm. I love you. I want the best for you. Be careful of so much more. And talk about that. That technique can <sighs> save you a lot of pain in the ass. Yeah. And uh, also make sure that you ask your partner questions. Yeah, we're still not done with that one. There's a lot of questions, guys. And they will trigger you make you think scratch your brain like if you can't good. come up with your own questions yeah good book we're still not done with it but 101 yeah. questions to ask before you get engaged well we're already past that but <laughs> by norman wright check it out they're, they're pretty interesting i mean questions that I mean, some some of them I didn't agree with, you know, the whole marriage thing or living together. Yeah. But. But nonetheless, they're the topics that needs to be discussed. Right. Because it opens doors to the things in your closet that I think 
in each person's closet on background and past they need that both people need to be aware of before they get engaged on marriage and within themselves within themselves because some of those questions you, it, i was like yeah. Wait, what yeah i didn't even know how to answer them i agree anything else to add mi amor um i know that we strongly disagree to call people but if you have that mentor that you're close enough to discuss because sometimes some people struggle with how to get to this point you know so i'm sure they hopefully people have individuals in their lives who are doing better for themselves who like again isn't on just their side but also is kind of like is it biased Well, what you're trying to say is this, which is what I was going to say after you 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 were going to finish. Know who your audience is. Because if you're going to go to Aunt Becky, who's been divorced 10 times, you know, and has 12 different kids and, you know, considers herself a bad bitch or whatever, maybe she's not the best person to go ask. I'm starting ask. to think you like that bad bitch term cuz you use it prick. No, quite more often. like more like I'm annoyed with it. That's like <laughs> That's so know know your it. audience, know your audience. But if you have a mentor or a friend or a family member or relative that has a good healthy relationship with good boundaries, values and standards and morals, yeah, you can come to them. Ideally, you would want to have a person who has your partner's back. Mm -hmm. Because think about this. If you go to somebody, if you go to vent to somebody who has your back, they might have the best intentions, but they have your back. So whatever right. you tell them, they're going to amplify it and they're going to fuel the fire. But if you go to somebody who has your partner's back, that's just going to help bring you guys closer together. And if both parties do that, it's people on their opposite sides who actually want to bring them together and mm -hmm. split them up. And that is key to a healthy relationship as well. I think it's very important that everybody has at least one of those people in their their mm -hmm. circle. Yeah. Because we it's being resourceful, having those resources it doesn't have to be just for business. If it's not like if we're having a disagreement, I know I can reach out to Leah. I mean, there's been times where she's like, "Look, I got your back, but you have to understand where Alex is coming from." Like, bitch, she's supposed to be my friend. <laughs> I think I, I <laughs> But think I, I get I, it. I think I thought about bringing Leah as, as a guest. I think she'd be... Oh, my gosh, she'd be so Leah, funny. Leah, she's she's so hilarious. hilarious. Shout, out, shout out to you, Leah. <laughs> What's up, girl? <laughs> yeah, she's funny. She's funny. Yeah. No, definitely a good point, mate. 100%. I'm, I'm with you on that one. But, mm -hmm. yeah. So, we're going to close this up. We're not going to, you know, beat the dead horse. I think we're giving you all we knew, all we've been using. And, again, if you guys found any value in this episode, please click like share subscribe to my channels but definitely share with people that you think um, i need to hear this as a matter of fact quick story one of your friends l recently told me that one of my episodes particularly about emotional maturity helped her understand certain things about her relationship right. and she took a drastic step towards improving it and that was a biggest compliment for me so yeah share with this episode or any of my, our previous episodes with people who you believe might need to hear it and hopefully it will help them out Other than that, thank you guys for being part of our journey. Baby, thank you. Yes. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Doodles.